I don't have a problem, honestly. It's it's just, you know, it's a beautiful day. Uh, the sun is shining. I'm off, which is a very good thing, which means I don't have to drive anywhere. I'm just enjoying, enjoying a little cold one. Uh, I thought there was something floating in that one. Ah, this afternoon. It says Bandla on the, the glass, which is actually an Indian beer, but it's not an Indian beer that's in it. Uh, it's a Scottish lager called Tenants, uh, known for its big red tea, uh, which is uh, kind of staple <laughs> around here. Um, you know, you've got, in terms of consumption of liquid, uh, we've got Tenants, then way down the list you'll have the likes of water and milk and tea and coffee and whatnot. <laughs> uh, we're actually bottle fed it as uh, babies. Uh, we're reared on it in actual fact. I picked this glass up in Shrewsbury, uh, which is the, where we stay when we go down to Scale Model World in Telford. Shrewsbury is just like the town next door. Uh, and each night when we return from the show, we go out for a meal and we went to this Indian restaurant and we were served our Bangla beer in these Bangla glasses and we, we asked if they could spare us a couple and they did. Uh, and that's why I'm drinking out of it. So. Anywho, the fucking fucker. Where are we with the little fucker? Uh, not perhaps as advanced as you may have hoped. Um, I'm, I'm back on shift. Uh, I, I haven't been on shift work for two and a half years because I was taken off a shift for medical reasons. I was struggling with the night shifts and I was struggling with the 12 hour shifts. My, my feet were, couldn't take the pounding as it were. I'm just getting old, that's all. Uh, but in their infinite wisdom, my company, a well-known uh, French tyre manufacturer um, a, obliterated my day shift job and if I want to stay employed with them I had to go back on shift uh, which is pardon my French shit but it's a job uh, I should be thankful that I have a job uh, it pays well for what it is uh, and it pays for all this and all, 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 all these and the roof and whatnot and uh, so yeah, that's, that's why I haven't been around much and because it's the holiday period when one of the, it's a five team uh, rota, uh, so when one of the teams go on holiday, the other four teams have to sort of make up the slack obviously, so it's what's called a compressed rota, so I've got a three and four night, twelve hour night shift batch coming up, which I'm not looking forward to, but uh, we'll see. Until such times as Annie and myself can get our little video production company on a paying basis, I'll just need to put up with it. But uh, my God, we are certainly uh, upping our efforts in that regard, shall we say. Anyway, let's get back to plastic, shall we? The Fokker. <clears throat> so I've got the cockpit kind of done. I haven't done all the little crossbars. I've got the sidewall ones uh, painted up. and I mean, look, not that there's really much to see with these. Um, but the thing with special hobby uh, is that they don't... The word special, I don't know where that comes from. Well, maybe I do, in fact. Uh, special needs hobby, it maybe should be. Um, is that their mouldings are... I mean, it, it's short-run kits. You know, the, the, this is no Tamiya, this is no Edward, this is no Hasegawa. Um, and therefore, a little bit of work is required. I mean, look, if you look at the wings, uh, that misalignment there, I mean, you can see the, the, the machine gun ports. Uh, are also misaligned, but the reason I had to do that was to make sure that the leading and trailing and wingtip edges are lined up. Uh, had I aligned this area here up, then there would have been a big discrepancy around there, which would have been a lot harder to deal with. This way I can just shim them uh, to make them fit, as it were. But the, all the, the little crossbars for the internal framework, if you were to look at the, the sprue and cross-section, instead of it being round like that, it's kind of... It's like the moulds are just, I've been dis, you know, dislocated slightly. So these little uh, tubular pieces are going to be very, very hard to sort of trim. I mean, it's, it's not as if it's like a seam line. It's, it's a complete misalignment. Uh, so I haven't even bothered cutting these off the sprue because I will just use aluminium tubing for them. Uh, but it has meant a lot of dressing up of a lot of things. Uh, but uh, anyway, so the, the, the main part of the cockpit is painted. I've got the, the, the harnesses done. And the seat, I'm actually quite chuffed with the seat because it, I've achieved an effect that I've been trying to get for quite some time. And that is the, the paint worn through to the aluminium uh, underneath. And using the Mr. Metal aluminium, I've managed to get a nice kind of reflective effect. And it does look like it's the paint uh, 
sorry, it does look like the aluminium under the paint. One of the things that I've, I've always hated when I've done my chipping is the chipping, you know, if I'm using a, you know, like just putting little dots of paint on here and there, it always looks like it's on top of the paint colour. And I've managed to achieve this, um, I can't tell you how because it was just one of those things that just seemed to appear, even though I was actually trying to achieve it. Uh, but the seat now does look like it's worn, the paint has worn through to the bare aluminium. I'm actually quite chuffed with that. Uh, the engine. Uh, now remember I said that I was going to build this one out of box. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, I was going to build this one out of box because you got the resin engine and you got the, the, the piece of photo etch. Um, the strange thing is that of the two engines that you get, one is the Mercury and the one that I'm building uses the, the Wasp Twin. The Mercury is very, very well um, equipped, as it were. It, it, it's, there's a lot of etch, there's, the, there's a lot of parts to it that will build up into a very nicely detailed engine. For some unknown reason, the Wasp Twin is basically the, uh, the gear reduction unit, the housing, and the cylinder blocks, and that was it. Uh, and this one, well, you know, the, where the cowling is quite a, a nice open cowling, and the engine does sit up quite far you know, forward on this one. It's not like the, the Rapu which is hidden behind layers and layers of plastic. This one will be quite visible. So I decided uh, that I'd have a go at uh, detailing the engine as best I can. Uh, so I've added my own push rods which were... The, the thing with the push rods is that there's usually a, uh, like a compression nut at the top where it fixes into the top of the, the, the cylinder and then there's a compression nut at the bottom. And usually I've, I've tried to achieve that by putting a little bit of masking tape or something around it. And I was going to use, remember those uh, threaded hex nuts that I bought for detailing up the, the, the Hellcat that were like £12 for a bag of 25 of these things? And I was going to use them, uh, although they are slightly over scale, thankfully, because it would have been quite, quite an expensive uh, engine to finish. I mean, it would have been about what, 7 or £8 worth of threaded hex nuts I would have used on this. But instead, I used the aluminium alloys micro tube and one size is designed to slide fit inside the other. So it was just a simple case of taking the, what was it now, the point, point 0.5 millimeter, slicing little, tiny little pieces off of that, and then using a little lens of the point 0.3 millimeter, and using the point 0.5 as the, the, to give the effect of the, the compression nut, shall we say. I mean, it's not obviously hexagonal, but at that scale you can kind of get away with it. And the same with the ignition harness. Um, I used uh, an old copper wire. Oh, here's another typhoon coming. Oh, oh he's just doing a flyby. Um, yeah, I used an old copper wire uh, for the actual ignition hoses. I mean, I, I managed to find a picture of a, uh, the Wasp Twin online, and it's braided hoses that they have. <laughs> okay. Uh, and again, I used the 0.5, no, sorry, I beg your pardon, the 0.3 millimeter. Yeah, I used the 0.3mm to replicate the compression nuts going from the ignition harness ring to the actual cylinder blocks. And it looks quite effective, I have to say. I'm quite chuffed with the way it turned out, to be honest. Um, although, now that it's painted up, you kind of lose the effect a bit because of the it, they're all painted the same colour, in other words, so it, they're not quite as standout-ish as they were before. But that's kind of pretty much where I've gotten to. I mean, I've done the... Uh, the instrument panel using the photo etch. Well, I didn't have to use the micro crystal clear to create the lens effect because it's a shiny film that has the actual dials on it, and of course that then sits behind the photo etch, so that creates uh, what looks like a, a lens on the actual dial. So, anyway, there we go. That's a little update on the fucking Fokker, the little Fokker, uh, and I'll see you again for another update sometime in the. I was going to say distant future, but not so distant future, the, the, the foreseeable future, just in a few weeks or, I don't know, Sean.